Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for coming to our webinar. Good morning to anybody that is east of the eastern time zone that we are in. My name is Tim Noka. I am the wingman for the main guy today whose name is Michael Ward. Michael has been in the IT industry for just about 40 years. 22 years working with business objects. At first, he was a uh, partner, and after about seven years, he started working with SAP development individually. And he is, uh, he's been working with ProTech also for about 10 years. So we go way back with Michael. For our organization, he's taught hundreds of classes to thousands of students and always gets outstanding marks on his teaching. So those of you that know Michael, I'm sure you wouldn't be surprised to hear that. Those of you that don't, I think you're going to be entertained in the next hour or so with his knowledge and his enthusiasm. One ground rule I'd like to lay out before we get started is questions. We do want to give you the ability to ask questions, so if you would do that in the question area of the webinar. At 20 after the hour and 40 after the hour, we will take breaks in the presentation to handle any questions that have come up. So with that, let's go ahead and get started, Michael. Thanks again, everybody, for attending. Welcome, everybody. Probably a lot of familiar faces out there, I'm sure, from the community that I, that I know probably attended other webinars that I've done as well, been through my training, maybe you've attended some of the conferences and stuff as well. And this is a lot of fun working with the product. The product has some tremendous capabilities. They're adding in features at an amazing pace. I work directly with the developers for a lot of it now. And everybody's talking visualizations, visualizations, visualizations. It's the hot word. Well, if you're in the real world out there, in the business intelligence world, you're gonna find a need for multiple products. You're gonna need a reporting tool, You'll need your visualization tool. Some companies are finding out the hard way that uh, you can't do it with one or the other, but you need both. Webby has some tremendous capability that's already there. It's been there, a lot of it, you know, some of that's been newer stuff as well, but what's nice about it, it provides you with a known technology for many of you already. You've already paid for it, and it allows you multiple data sources, including universes, as well as other data sources as well. And there's so many cool things that you can do with it. We're going to basically get into it. We're going to talk about some of the linking functionality, the new intra-document linking, and take you down a path for that as well. It's just such a powerful tool, and so many people push it to the side when they, they should really be looking at it and saying, hey, what can we do? What are the, some of the more advanced things we're going to do? What are some of the newer features? So what I'm going to do is gen up a live example here right now. So I'm going to go out there live in my webby environment. Let me gen up a, a quick report with a query. And we're going to build it all live. We're going to build in document linking. We're going to build in input controls. We're going to build this and have some fun with it. I know it's the boring e-fashion universe, but it works. It provides us some good information, a good universe worth of data. So we'll get this query built real quick, drag in the few objects that we're going to need, and then what we'll do is we'll get the show on the road and show you some of the really great features that you can do as part of this. So 4.2 SP6 is what I'm currently running. SP7 is now out, has some additional bells and whistles as well. But uh, all the way through 6, you'll see some things that uh, you won't get until you're in 6, but are available right around the corner. So let me load up, get in the objects that I need. I always like to get everything so I don't have to go back to the query panel, although we know we can always go back later. And I like to do the actual build like that, so you kind of review the typical process for building a query, getting a report output, and running it from there as well. So let's get the infamous product lines category and SKU descriptions, and we'll use different combinations of these as I bring them in. And, and then let's see, we'll get our measures in there as well that we're going to need, and we should be good to go for that. So I'm running HTML version, 4.2 SP3 and above. If you're not running HTML, you're missing out on a tremendous product. You don't need the Java version anymore. By using the HTML version, there's a lot of hidden bonuses that are available as well. Little things that it does kind of as a byproduct that uh, aren't documented, but well familiar with from my experience as well. Get it to come back up. So I'm um, get rid of the report that's there. That was my generic report that was automatically generated and we do a little house cleaning and off we go. First thing we're gonna do is let's start building some examples of things that we wanna do. And the first example I'm gonna do is gonna start building some charts, all right? So what I'm going to do is off the report elements tab using the uh, chart feature there, I'm just gonna default it and pick Take my chances on that one. And as you know, you get an empty shell. Because I use the report elements, which is used strictly for new blocks that you're going to create, automatically populated. So one of the bonuses that HTML has, that if I had highlighted some objects on the left side and done that, it would have automatically populated it. So for this one, I want this particular chart to have quarter and sales revenue. And by doing that, it's going to populate it. Now, another way you can do that is with assigned data. It's a big chart. 
not as big as I'd want it to be because I'm going to have some other blocks that I'm going to be displaying, in particular charts as well. So I've got a quarterly report with sales revenue, nice little pop-up along the way, as you see right there. And now I'm ready to go. Now all the data is rolled up to the quarter level because that's all this printed into the, into the block itself. So I built my first little chart. Now let's add a second one in over on the right side with some other data, and, and we'll add some additional components as we go along. So I'll pick up here on one of the chart um, type blocks here that we're going to drop in. And this one has my sales revenue, and I need to drop into this one. Because I had sales revenue highlighted, it actually brought that into this particular chart, and I need state. So I've got a mishmash of data coming in here from different sources, different ways. So the left side is a report that has quarterly sales revenue. There's no year tie-in at this particular point. And a report on the right displaying my sales revenue across state, as you see there as well. Space limit, obviously, uh, things are a little bit tight, so I'm not seeing everything. But, but there it all is, nevertheless. Let me move this over a little bit more and a little bit more here. See the data? And maybe we extend this out a little bit more on the right edge, and we can get our thing set up and ready to go. So what we want to do now is now we need to add a third piece of information, a report. This is a typical thing people do with visualizations. They build each of the individual visualization blocks that you see here. In this particular case, I want lines, name a manager, and I'm going to bring in sales revenue. We'll bring those three in, and that is a report block as opposed to a charting block that we have tied in. So now I've got all these three different blocks, but they all sit independently. There's nothing linking those together, all right? There's no tie-in whatsoever. So I need to start building in some of the extended functionality, and I need to do that using the infamous input control feature. Input controls is an awesome feature that allows you a way of doing, from the analysis to the bar, local filtering. They show up as little optional things like check boxes, radio bo uh, buttons, or list or combination boxes, and you can use those to drive it. So we're going to go out here, and we're going to create an input control, and we're going to create the input control for a year. Aha! Some of you were wondering, where's the data quarterly data going to roll out and give me it at the year level on a higher level. We're about to do that right now. So I'm going to pick a year, input control, awesome input control windows. It gives you single and multiple values on the left, extended properties here. There's an even extended one in here in 4.2 SP7 that allows you to bring in values from a separate file, whatever, so kind of neat. We want this to be a list box because I want to be able to pick one or more years or have my users pick one or more years. Let's put it that way. So I do a next, okay? And I come in here, and I want this to affect the entire document. Take a lot of pride in this particular feature. This was a request that I had made of the development staff, my good friend Samuel from in Paris Development. We came back to him and said, I have a problem. When I create an input control, it only applies to the tab I'm on. I want an option that I can apply it report-wide, so it does all the tabs. Here it is, right here, entire document versus current. So that way, if I'm on the first tab, but I have eight or nine other tabs all with year on it, it'll apply it across the board. That is an awesome feature. So this particular input control, I want to drive across all of them. So we got it all set up there, entire document, finish it out. And now let me open up the input control box. So now on the left side, I have a nice little box, and it could have been list value for single values or whatever, but I might pick 15, 17, and 18 and do an OK. And my data all is going to change on the right side across all of those. I go back to all values and so on, and we'll come back and play with those a little bit later on as well. But I was smart about it. By making it document-wide, everything on this tab is affected by it, as well as every other tab further down the line for that one. So that worked out very, very well. We've got it finished up, that one there, and now my year's finished up, and I'm good to go. So now I need a second input control. I need to tie all these different pieces together, and there could have been more than three blocks. I might have had a stack of six charts on top of each other, different types, all integrated using the same concept. If you're really good with this, you learn how to use the input controls and really make it happen there as well. So let's go out and create a second input control. We need additional ones. This one's going to be for SKU description, which I don't have out there yet. Okay. And we'll next do that one. And we're going to make that one for SKU description a combo box. Now, one of the drawbacks is it's only going to allow me to pick one value. You're going to see later on from a display perspective that becomes a problem. I really, truly need multiple. We'll set it up as a single one combo box. As you know, with input controls, different properties and things that you can control over here, a lot of really cool stuff you can do there. I could have made it a multiple value list box, but I didn't want that. Now, again, I need to be very careful. In this particular case, I want this one to apply just to report number one. So the tab that I'm on will apply it at the tab level only, not across multiple tabs that you see. You have to manage these effectively. Be very careful. 
So I finish it up here. And now notice what I have over here is I have my SKU description drop down, which allows me to pick individual values. And everything gets much smaller or bigger depending if I pick a category that has you know a lot of volume or low volume. Of course, I can always go back and set it to all, go all the way back up to the top, reset it to all values, and it resets them to all, and I can do my OK here to clear it. And now I've got this all set up and ready to go. So you can see I built my different visual, either charts or my report. Now I want to have a nice way of tying it together, which is exactly what we're doing, kind of coming up with an integrated way to tie the pieces together. Okay, And I can have other input controls to drive different combinations of these as well, but the very nice format that we're following to make it easy to follow what's going on. So now I want to do one for sales revenue as well. As you know, measures present a very unique problem from input controls. I can't do check boxes or list boxes or combo boxes, whatever, because we're dealing with ranges. So we have to put a different hat on when we're going to be working with an input control from measure. So let's go to input controls. Let's create a new one for sales revenue. When you go to the next window, you're going to see a very limited window in terms of what you're allowed to do, because most of these don't make sense for measures. I can have a simple slider or a double slider. Those are my two choices that I have. A uh, simple slider puts a single slider bar out there. We're going to do a double slider, which works like a between. And that's the typical way I like to use the, the sliders for measures, is using the double slider. A single slider, you have to define it to be greater than or less than at the time you build it. I don't want that. I want a double slider. The moment I pick double slider, I get a little penalty. It comes back and says, uh, hang on a minute. This is a double slider. I don't know how wide to make this. I don't have a minimum or maximum value. You need to feed me some more information. I said, oh, okay. Well, the minimum value will make zero. The maximum value will make five million. A bit extreme, but the staff person I worked with him and I developing it just had some kind of set it up that way. We'll do increments of 10,000. Those numbers are going to vary depending on how big or small you want it. And I have a between, which I can also make a not between. Maybe I want the outside areas and not the inside areas. So look at that. So this we have to handle differently because it's a measure. Okay, and next through this one, in this particular case, I'm going to apply it to report one block only here that you see right there. Okay, and I can finish that one out. Make sure I get my, my slides in the right order. I don't miss anything here as well. So now in addition to having a Input control box for one or more years. I have one for SKU description, my, my single value list box. And I have the slider, double slider bar, in this case the double slider, that allows me to display my values that way. So as you manage that and you move the, the, the lower level one to one, the upper level down to the other end, you have to be careful because now I'm hitting a range that doesn't have any values. As it turns out, most of ours tends to be concentrated on the low end, so I've learned working with the data to go the lower I go to see more values show up. Although you can see, you've got to be real careful with the sliders on it, the double slider, to, to be too far off and not see all your values. So we and, and brought that one into the picture that you see right there. And now I see all my values tied in very nicely. So that worked out very, very well for us. So we created the new input control. And now I need one last one that I need to build into this one. But this one's going to be a little bit different type of a, a link that we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to click inside the chart that's on the right side, the chart block. I don't like calling them visualizations because it's charting. Visualizations can also have reports, so I have a different way that I look at it. And you have a feature that's been around quite a long while in version 4. You have the ability to do an, an element link within this. All right, It's over on report elements, but it's also on your right-click shortcut toolbar. If you're at the right level for the long one, you'll see a linking in there as well. And you have the ability to add an element link. And it's up here under linking as well. When you do that, you need to make sure that you've highlighted the block that's the driver. I'll show you another example later on of this as well. So I've already highlighted the bar chart you see below, and I'm doing an element link, add it. Okay, and it's a single object. It's going to be linked on state. And what I, there's a description box if you want to rename your blocks, which is a good habit to get into for those as well. So I could go into the block level. And then I want to link this only to block three. When you use input controls and you have multiple blocks on your report tab, you've got to very effectively manage these control where they are being applied to. And do I want to apply to all the blocks? I don't in this particular case. I only want it to block number three. So now I have a, like a little musical show going on. On the left side, I can say, well, what if I pick 17 and 18? So now my data gets smaller all the way down the line. And then I go in, I'm not going to pick a SKU number because you saw what well, I'll do at one time. Everything gets significantly smaller, although I picked a decent category. 
let's go all the way back up to the top, pick the all values again, okay? And if I wanted, I could play with the slider bars along the way, and I can filter it. Now, in addition to that, the uh, shared document link that we just did, the one that, I, uh, that I'm building right now, let me make sure I, um, I always follow my script type uh, link, the element linking that we're doing, has an additional piece. If you remember a minute ago, we linked this chart to the report down here with product lines and name manager. So what it allows me to do is to go to a particular column, click on that, and when I do that, not only chart itself is good, it's staying the way that it is, but it's actually linking over to here, and it's showing me the product lines, name of manager, and sales revenue for that particular state. So I'm mixing up a combination of input controls on the left, driving basically these two, and then the, uh, the shared link here to drive it within the document itself, and I can play with a combination of things that you see right there. Boy, does that make it very, very nice for us to be able to do that. And we were able to click on another state, watch this change its way around, and, and off we go with that. All right, so now we've got our input controls to drive part of it. We've got a, the uh, link within the block itself uh, on that particular tab to drive the individual one there. And again, you, this could be expanded even more. I could have added other input controls as well. Let's go down to the report tab on the bottom and rename it sales. What do we want to call it? Sales story or revenue story would be better. We'll do that one. So now I've got my one example here set up and all ready to go, showing the linking as well. Okay, so that's the revenue side. Tim, do we want to take some questions right now rather than me jumping into the next section? Sure, I have two. Go ahead. Okay. The first question, are the generic time frames, in other words, quarterly, monthly, yearly, are they based on calendar year or the client's business year if they do not report on January through December? It's going to be calendar year by default, always. Webby doesn't have any capabilities to allow us to flip calendars around unless we build more ex, you know, extensive variables with formulas and so on. I get asked questions related to that all the time. Is there a way we can change the calendar to a more of a custom type calendar? An enhancement request, yes, but I've not seen anything on that at this point. But you never know down the road it could happen. Second question? And they're still coming in. So anybody that does have a question, please fire it into the question area and we're, uh, we're actually growing a little bit, Michael. The second question, would input control entire document apply to the tabs added in the future by default? If you add an additional tab, yes, because I've actually tested that before where I had, I applied it document wide and then I added another report tab and then added additional reporting blocks to it and it automatically picks it up. If it came over from the, in the earlier era, by the way, with input controls and prior versions to four, you had to create a separate input control for every tab, even if it was identical. With the admin of version four, if I create my input controls first, then I duplicate a tab, it will carry those to the successive tabs as well. Third, how do you clear the element link? The element link over on the left side here, you'll notice on my screen there's a clear filters button. When I click on that, it sets it all back to all on the right side, and th those values for my product lines and so on are all automatically set. It's a good question. Very good. The clear filters is automatically generated whenever you create this element link feature that I just did for that, for that bar chart, and it has to have a clear filters for us resetting it to all. I'm going to do another example, a different example of this in a couple of minutes to show you that as well and as a reminder, but I wanted to do the first one a little more complex using a combination of the input controls and the, uh, the shared element link that you saw there as well. Is there a way to add time hierarchy to the pie chart so that you could drill down to the month week level and then the same for the bar chart with city state level? Not within the context of how I built it here. If I were to invoke the drilling functionality using drilling, and if, assuming my universe supports it in the proper way, I could drill that. I could do it that way using drilling. But that's not part of the input controls. That's the actual drill feature that comes with business objects. You know, as as one of the major features for drilling, because you can drill into a pie chart. It's one of the classic examples I do in our training in the drilling chapter. Is just click on one of the bars to go down to lower levels. So it does support that right now. Uh, using the, the standard drilling functionality that comes with the product. When working with element linking, is there a tooltip that appears that allows us to see what is selected? No, there's no capture for that at this point. There's a, um, well, I, I take that back. There's a reporting, there's a function in the document section that will capture input control values. For that particular element link that I don't know, I've not tested it with that, but I've used it for the input controls itself on the input control side. So that one I'd have to research, do some testing on it just to see. It actually would be a good enhancement if not. How can I, if I click on something from the shared el from that element link, can I capture it? And that would, that's, I'll have to, have to research that one. Good question. 
The state link to accessory lines. How does end user know what the report is showing since all states are still in the bar chart even though one state was selected? I don't know what way you would you'd be able to tell from that one. That's a good question. I'd have to look underneath and see what's going on with that one. I don't know of a, of a way to capture those because there's nothing that actually does display them. So uh, that's, again, let me research that one. I got an idea what might work. and I may have to talk to the developers to, on that as well. But let me see what I can find out on that one. Okay. Good questions. Yeah, Thanks. good. Um, Thanks, so a little bit of a tangent. We will ship a recorded copy out to everybody. Along with that, we'll include any answers to unanswered questions during the webinar. All right, some other things I want to do. Let me add another report tab. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to get into some of the newer features. There's a new feature called intra-document linking that allows us to jump around. And this is a really, really awesome feature. So what if I had something like this? This is brand new 4.2 SP6. I have a report that looks like this. Let me gin it up. Okay. It's got year, state, sales, revenue, quantity, sold margin. Nothing magical, nothing fancy. Let's break it by year using our analysis, take advantage of some of the great functionality. Okay. And what I want to do is, um, this is going to be my year state. We'll call it year state. And what I want to do is I want to duplicate that twice. I'm going to duplicate it once. I'm going to duplicate it twice. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the first one, and we're going to make that a year report. And there's our crazy uh, things going on. I probably would be wise to turn the break off. And then that one will rename year. And we're going to go to the second tab up here, and we're going to make that a state. And we don't need to worry about the break. It took it out for us. Call that one the state report. That one as well. So here's the problem with the situation I have. I have year and state report, and then it could be a chart, whatever, but this lends itself extremely well to the reporting side. What I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to have my user, if they want to see yearly data, to be able to click up here and have it automatically jump them to another tab. This is a new feature called intra-document linking. All right? It's an awesome feature. If they click on state, I want them to be able to go to the state report automatically. Yeah, I know you can go down to the bottom and look at the tab, but what if I build a couple different reports up here, a summary, a semi-detail on the right, maybe a more detail underneath it, and depending which one they're in, they click in the year, and it goes to one of three, two or three different tabs that have report aggregates at different levels, all right? Now, you can do this a couple ways. I'm going to do it by virtue of the title. So if I click in the year, okay, and I go back to my report elements, again, you need to be in 426 for this, 426 and above. It's worth going to SB6. We shook the release down. It's a very good release. And if you notice, there's a document button for adding a document link. This is new. And it's called an intra-document link. And this is really cool. So in other words, what I'm defining is if I click in that little year box on top, I want you to automatically go to the year tab. And you can put a little tip in there, although we'll just leave it at that. And then I want to go to state, and I want to do the same thing. I want to have a document there, an inter-document link, and if they select it in there, I want them to go to be able to the state side of it as well. Now you could have buttons instead of that. I have a, another presentation, I extended one that I can do for a future session, take a whole session to do it where I do a little more elaborate work with it, with charting and reporting as well. But this will give you the basics of how simple this can be. So I'm sitting here looking at this as, as a user, and I said, well, I'm looking at the state. Let me take this look at the state report. It dumps me over to the state. I'll go back to your state. Then I click on the year side of it, and it takes me back over to the year. So it allows me to do intra-document linking. I call it jumping, because it's jumping back and around and all over the place as part of that. And back on the original one here, there it is. Now, instead of doing it up here, let me, do, let me show you something to watch out for, because there's going to be questions that come up on this. I'm going to, uh, let's get this one out of here. Whoop. I was trying to remove it, and in the process, you saw what happened. Linking, and I want to remove, and then state. i got to be careful to do this without, um, without uh, clicking on it to remove it as well. This works out really, really well. So what if instead I chose to do it in the data section and not the title itself? I can still do the inter-document link here, like you see. And they're picking year, well, we'll take them to the year. And if they click in the state section and in the details section instead, I do the same thing. We'll add the document. This is again new. It's an intra-document link. 
That one will take them to state along the way. Right. And now when I click down in the detail section, it's going to jump me. Well, actually, let me turn the brake off. You saw it jump me across. If I go back to the year state and I pick on the state in here, it jumps it across to the state level. Now, there's probably two or three or four, maybe ten of you that have a question you're already typing in right now, and I can imagine what that question is going to be. Why didn't it filter on state California? Because you were on California when you did that. Because currently, the first release of intra-document linking in version 4.2 SP6 only does it what I call global. It basically, go, it, all of these are the same. It doesn't imply a filter here, and it doesn't apply a filter here. And again, we've already made a document requ enhancement request with the Samuel and his development staff that that would be cool. Not only can I jump to state, but I can specifically get over there and have this Florida get passed across as a filter. That's a logical thing. It's a good thing that I'd like to see. It would really lend itself very, very well. So that was an enhancement as well. Now, what I do in some of the cases, I would rather do is stick a button up here for year and one for state and not have it in the report at all. Very easily done as well. But that's just an alternative way. But I wanted to show you both ways and what can happen with that as well. This new intradocument linking just opens up Pandora's box. The ability to jump around to different places and all. And if you think about it, it's a very common feature in a lot of the um, visualization tools that are out there. And it, with Webby, it fits in very nicely. It just allows us that much more extended capability. The, the idea of having buttons. Now, when I go back to the year, I could have year here also set up with an intradocument link. And set it up here and set it up to go back to year state. Going to reverse. A lot of people don't think about doing it that way. So now when I click on year, it takes me back to the year state. And when I click on the state column here, I go over to the state side. But on the state tab, I haven't built that in yet. So maybe I do the same thing in, in this particular case. I can highlight state, do the same concept. You want to be able to go back and forth. You want your users to go back and forth. I like the idea of doing it on a button rather than on an object. But that will change the moment they come back and they give us um, the ability to actually use it as a filter. So that when I come in here, if I click on that value, uh, I'm looking for that. They did not make service packs uh, SP7. We did check for that. Our enhancement was too soon for it out of SP6. But that was another request that we had made as well for that one. So again, the intradocument linking, I'm jumping all around. As opposed to doing it off of the report block itself, I could have had buttons. If you have a lot of extensive charting, that may be a better alternative. A little bit harder with a chart to drive it through there versus something else for that as well. So again, just a mixture of all the different types of functionality. I'm going to add another report out here and show you yet another example of what we can do. So let's assume I have year and quarter and sales revenue and quantity sold. Let's drag these out once. And we'll take the and we'll drag it. Actually, drag it over to here, That's where we want to put it. And then we're going to just do year sales revenue quantity sold, and drag these over to here. And then we're going to drag it up here. Just hang on to your seats for a little bit here. I'll show you what we're going to do. This is pretty cool. Let me go back to my input controls features to make sure I, I get all my values because I'm missing data. If you notice what happened, a little lesson there, by the way. I'm generating a new tab with a new report block, and it's filtered because when I created the year and put control in the beginning, and we had a question that kind of tied in with it, you saw what happened. It was still filtering everything new that I was creating as well. This in itself isn't really exciting, so let's turn it into a pie chart. Love it. And notice the color. 4.2 SP6 has the robust colors. If you're using the new Fiori Webby tool with the Fiori view to it, you can have an animation feature where these will kind of kind of kind of come in in a, uh, in a gradual fashion as well. It's pretty cool to see as, as part of that. This is a classic one that I like to do that, that I've been doing for a while as part of this presentation because it's typical of what a lot of users have wanted to do. They want to be able to create a simple link with their documents. So what I want to do, I've got a pie chart on the left. My kit could be a KPI. And I've got a summary and detail report on the right, and I want those linked together. I did a different example of it earlier, but this is a more interesting one. It's a practical one that some of my customers actually told me about as well. So what I want to do is I want to link my pie chart to the summary and the detail report. And I want to be able to click on a slice, which represents one of my KPI numbers, and have it reflected automatically over here. So I'm going to use the element linking feature again to add. 
Now remember, common sense tells you, you better have at least one common dimension to link these together, and maybe more. If this was a 3D column chart with an X and a Z axis, I'd have to have more than one if I really want to effectively be able to drive it two ways. So we'll do a next on that, next it through, and I want to link it to the two blocks that are out there, blocks one and three. I don't want to link it back to itself. And again, part of the reason I do this example is because I've seen people do that. They'll also highlight the pie chart. And the moment you do that, you just limited yourself because now you don't have the pie charts to click on. It only slows the one slice. That one you don't want to have this link take place. You want to leave it alone. So watch what happens here when we finish it up. I now get a clear filters button that's generated. It does that whenever you do sh these element linking. So now when I click on the blue slice, which represents 15, everything changes on the right. I pick on the 18, or I pick on the 17, or I pick on the, which is one, that one's 16. I can clear the filters, set them all back together, and I get all the values all over again. Did I have to drive it from here necessarily? No, I can drive it from the report and driven these two. Typical customers of mine that have used this, this is how they use it. They said they, they'll set up maybe three pie charts across with detail reports under in each one, three different KPIs up here. As they work the first pie chart, then they work the second, they work the third, they're watching all the reporting and or charting. This does not have to link to a report. Just as easily could have linked to a chart as well. Now, one of the questions I always get that comes up as well, can I in turn have the year linked to something else? And the answer is absolutely yes. You can actually daisy chain it. So what I would do is I would set up a link from here to another block over on the right side so that when I picked one of the slices here and then I clicked on the one over here, assuming I've set it up that way, that will in turn filter something over on the right side, whether that's a report or a chart or any combination, and it will still work as well. So again, just another example of what you can do for that as part of that. So again, we're mixing and matching. We're doing the element linking here, which is really cool. That's done within the tab itself. But then we're using the other feature for linking at the documents to link to within the different document tabs, as you saw through a couple of the different examples that I've done as well. Again, really, really, really does a nice job for that part of it as well. So again, just extending out through more and more examples. Now, the other one that I want to do now is Let's do this. Let me close this one out. Unfortunately, we'll clean house a little bit and get into our last topic that I want to cover today. A little house cleaning for that one. So I'll come back in new. It's better for me to start with a clean slate. I have too many moving parts that were out there already, and I don't want people to get caught up on something that I'm doing out here. It won't make it very complex, but we'll bring it in. Notice I also have a text feature that's now released in SB6 for us as well. So we're going to do this. We'll take year and quarter, or just better yet, year and state, and bring in our measures, minus one. By the way, you're seeing another new HTML feature. I clicked on the folder itself without dragging it. In HTML, it dumps the entire contents of that folder in here. I don't even have to drag anymore. I can just double click on a folder and pick up the byproduct of that as well. So it says sales revenue quantity sold margin, but I need my year in there and I need my state in there. I don't really need them in there, but we'll put them in there. Let's move these around a little bit, move these around again a little bit. Let's run that query, and now I'm going to show you another advanced use of the uh, a visualization like technique that can be used also in a different type of context here. This is really going to be cool for this one. So again, to simplify it, I have a report that's we'll call it the year state combined, and we'll duplicate it a couple times. We'll duplicate it and duplicate it again. And we'll take the original year one that's here. We'll, we'll just limit this to, year, uh, no, we'll limit it to, to states with sales revenue quantity. And we'll take this one here, and we're going to name it chart. And we're going to take the second one and name it report. And I've got the year state one that's here that we want to keep out there. I'll call it the full report, rather. That makes more sense for that one. Okay, here's the full report, state, so on. What I want to do here is... We're going to turn this one into a pie chart. I'll gamble on it and take my chances on what it's going to give me. Okay, And then the second one, we're going to leave it as a report, as you see right there. So I've got a report tab, a chart tab, and a full report tab that you see right up here. So what I want to do is I want to be able to create an input control, a dynamic one that the user can select, and I want to be able to do it so that on one single tab, notice I have chart and report on a separate tab, we're going to change that in a couple of minutes. And I want to be able to use the input control to automatically 
show either the report or the chart and alternate all automatically, dynamically hiding. Hiding is an extended piece of functionality I could have built in some of the examples I already did just a couple of minutes ago as well. So uh, let me get this report, let me get this set up correctly. Full report, so that's all set to go. So what we'll do is we're going to create a new variable. There's your new variable feature. And my favorite name for this is called switch. It's going to be a dimension, and it's equal to double quote, space, double quote, nothing. You say, what are you doing? What are you creating? So to simplify this as well, let me take the chart off of here to a copy and a report and do a paste. So I want them together on the same tab. This is the whole name of the game. I want to be able to layer these in a more advanced type functionality. I can get rid of the chart one right at this point because I don't even need it all and clean house for that one. So what I want to do is I want to create an input control off of that offer here that when I select it will jump me over to the report off of this tab is actually the one I'm going to drive it off of right in here. And depending on which option I pick, we'll hide one and display the other or vice versa. Okay. So what we're going to do is create an input control. This is a technique a lot of people never thought about dynamically loading values in. And there's an enhancement in SP7 that will make it even easier for you later on as well for this particular one. So what I want to do is create an input control off, here we go, uh, analysis, input control. And it's going to be for switch, a local variable. And we're going to a couple other neat little tricks for that one. And we want it to be, let's see, uh, we're going to make it a combo box, switch will be. And I want it to have a, a custom set of values. So I click the select values button. And you enter your values. We're going to put in chart as one of these. And we're going to put in report as the other as I get it set up to go. And now I've got my input control set to one or the other. And I can have a lot of selection of all values. You need to be careful here. Because if you don't do that, you're going to have to set a default value so it knows which one to bring up. But I'll leave it at this with the all option you see here. Okay. And now I have my switch set up. Where's my input control? I've got to open it up here. And what will happen is I can pick a chart or I can pick a report, but as it doesn't do anything because I have not built in the logic to do that. Now let's stop for a minute because we have a question and answer period here for a second. And then I'm going to go back and finish that out and show you how cool this feature is just in another extension of visualizations. So Tim, without further ado, do we have some additional questions? You bet. Visually, how is a user going to know which selection was made on the bar chart here without looking at the input control section? I was expecting the selected state to highlight. Now that question came in a while ago. I hope it still makes sense yeah. to you. Yeah. I can capture that. There's a reporting function that will capture the input control value. I can build that into a variable and I can display it. I have an example of that I do in uh, one of my other presentations called Now You See It, Now You Don't, where we actually do that. But that, that can be done. You can capture the input controls. Uh, there's a user response. There's one that captures report function values. One of them is for drill bars and one of them is for input controls. And I can just build it into a variable and display it very easily. On the element link topic, how did the lines, names, sales revenue appear? Just wanted to confirm I followed the process properly. I brought those in as a report block below the two charts. And then I took the, bar, the, the column chart and I did the um, linking from there using the linking function to tie to it uh, underneath there. And when I created that link, it asked me for what object and it was linked via SKU description. So that's how the pieces kind of all fit together. Any high-level guidance on input, input control? When to apply to the entire document and when to just the current report? You have to think about what type of object it is and how you're using it. Dimensions and measures will be handled differently, of course. With dimensions, for example, in the one I did in the beginning, I created a chart with quarter and sales revenue, and I created one with state and sales revenue. There was no year built into it. I did that on purpose. That by itself would be misinformation because you don't know about that. So in that case, one of the guidelines is it made sense to create an input control for a year so the contents on that tab would properly be rolled up for a specific year, which is more typical of how you would want to be able to display it. When you do it across multiple tabs, that factor comes in. Do I have year on other tabs, first of all? And if I do, does it make sense for this year, one that I'm using on the first tab, to also apply to the others? You might be going down a different path with how you're displaying it on a different tab and linking it. So you just have to look at how am I trying to put it all together individually within that report tab and in the big picture across multiple tabs as well. When we click on a pie or bar chart, can Excel be displayed for the data? 
I'm thinking of live office functionality where if you're inside of there, inside of an Excel one, you can it, it can automatically bring the data in from the query that way. That's the only thing that I'm aware of. But to bring Excel, Excel, and unless you mean Excel as a data provider, if you're talking about bringing Excel into the input control, that's a 4.2 USB 7 feature that was just introduced to be able to bring it in, and we, we are just testing that out right now, but it's a brand new. You saw when I just created the input control, I had to load in the individual values. There's a new extension that allowed me to read that in, and Excel was the feature we were looking for. So instead of me putting in report and putting it in chart, they're already coming in automatically, and they get pl plugged into that, and then my switch will automatically have the values that way. That's a 4.2 SP7. We're working with it right now and analyzing it and putting some examples together. If that's something you might be interested in, I can always give you some information more on that, post the, the webinar as well. So let me show you what I got here. I've got two reports. I've got a report and a chart, two blocks technically. So now what I did is I built a simple variable called switch, and it has one of two values, chart or report. So what I want to do here is let's take the report, right-click format table, that's your typical block level, and what I'm going to use the infamous hide functionality. Many of you have seen my presentation where I create master detail reports, and I hide the detail block if the master cells section totals based on a value. Great stuff. So many great things that Webby provides. Hide when the following is true. Right now, I'm on the report, and I'm telling it when to hide it. I open up the formula bar here, and I say what I want to do is the hide logic is when switch is equal to, and I type in double quote, a chart, which is the value that I, one of the two values I put in there. Okay, so what that means is what? Let's take a look back at the hide logic. Be very careful. Hide functionality works everywhere in Webby, and we often look at it backwards. Hide when the following is true, not false, true. So many times people flip around and they misinterpret the last part of it for that one. So if this works theoretically correct, let's see what happens here. So report is up here, and which shouldn't have disappeared, but if I pick chart, the report should disappear. And lo and behold, there you go. All right, so now what I want to do is do the opposite over here. Right click, format chart. This is a simple example that can be extrapolated to much more complex, and we've done that. Now I'm on the chart, and I have to define what I want the chart to hide. Different situation, opposite. So in this case, I'm using that good old switch that we created. This is a simple local variable. And then until you get to 4.2 SP7 where you can't bring it in from a file, you just build it yourself. Switch equals quote report. And and I could have had more than those two values that you saw for that one as well, and using the hide functionality. So now when chart comes up, if I pick report, or if I pick chart, okay, now I can layer, but I have an interesting little problem. These are some little techniques and things that we kind of help you with. So let's go back and edit that switch that we have out there. And notice allow, allow selection of all values. I'm going to uncheck it. But then if I do that, I need a default value. So I need that default value to be defined. And what I want the default to be is not chart, but I want the default value to be a report. So let's put report in here. So that'll be the default value that I stick in for it. There's a report. So by default, I see the report. Because if you look at the drop-down, I only have two values now. These are the little tiny things that you forget about, all right, for that one. So now I pick chart, chart, chart comes up here. So now what I can do is I can move this chart right over the top. Many of you have attended webinars where I've done the one on now you see it, now you don't, which I've extended out and, and do more with it. This is kind of a, a neat little technique that people never think about that's simple. So now look what I've done. I love layering reports. I don't want them going across or on multiple tabs. I want them layered right on top of each other. And depending what I pick, whether I pick report or I pick chart, now remember, I could have had summary report, detail report, summary chart, detail chart, or whatever, multiple values, and I'd have whatever one show up here based on that, but look how simple it was. I created a simple variable called switch, using the input control feature for that, creating it for it. I predefined the values. Now, again, I don't like the fact that i got to load them in, but I can't wait. I'm getting the testing process right now for that new 4.2 SP7 feature, where I can suck a list of values in from Excel, and they're automatically populated. Now, I'm still going to have to build the hide logic, all right? Let's not forget, when I go in here to format chart, i got to make sure I manage the formatting, hiding functionality for that as well. So, but it gives me yet another option. So, again, it's so many cool features that Webby provides. Look at 
look at the use of input controls and the ability to inter-document linking and element linking that we did within a single one. Combine all those together, you could have a, like a little musical show going on with charts disappearing and appearing and the reports disappearing and reappearing and the inter-document linking jumping us all over the place, all within here. This is one single document, could have as many report tabs with all the different functionality that you see as well. So it really, really lends itself very, very well to that. Well, let's leave it and open it up here for the remainder of this for questions. Let's try to field as many as I can. And Tim will work on me doing some follow-up on a couple of those questions that were pretty good that came in. Sounds good. And we're going to uh, we're going to do a little bit of wrap-up at 1 o'clock Eastern. So we'll do questions before then and then after then. Um, can charting be created for existing BO reports as opposed to bringing in data live? Sure, I you know if I open as long as I have the full edit capability, I can create charts at any point in time inside that in my document with the data that's there. If this report is downloaded to Excel, are the tables slash blocks still linked to allow a user to make desired changes? I can tell you without knowing the answer, no, because when you bring this stuff down to Excel, you lose all the input control functionality, introduction linking, all of that disappears. They have no intention of building it into Excel because they don't want people going to Excel. They want you staying in Webby. Now, one other little caveat you need to be aware of. Even if I lose all that stuff, you say, well, at least I got my chart and my reports. Remember, charting in, for, for, in the for world has a problem. When you dump stuff into Excel, any reports are converted into Excel reports, and any charts are still converted into bitmaps. They have not fixed that to give us an editable chart. And it's because there are six or eight or nine, ten chart types that were relatively new that don't have the equivalent in Excel. I'm only the messenger, so don't shoot me on that one. I've been constantly beating up the development staff to fix that. But none of this stuff carries over, which is really too bad. Wouldn't it be nice to create a PDF file as opposed to Excel and have all the input controls get carried across? I've made requests for that, but they're, they're going to leave it inside of Webby to keep us in Webby. Can you put a link back to master? Sure. Yep, I can link any combination of ways within. Is the intra-document connection retained when migrating from one environment to another? It's built into the document as you save it, so it should automatically go across. There should not be any issue at all. And we've tested it under multiple, or we've done an upgrade and used our same examples over, and it's worked just fine. If we click on a state from 2017 and it takes us to the state report, will it limit the data to 2017? Remember earlier when I mentioned that, that that's an enhancement request we've made? That was the first thing we saw when we started using the intradocument linking is, but if I'm in the data section itself, why does it not filter when it comes across? That we, I expect to see as an enhancement request real soon. I suspect SP7, I'm expecting it to have it as a service pack enhancement, I hope, because we need that as one of the patches to, to be able to do that. How does Webby compare or contrast to Microsoft Power BI as a visualization tool? I can't talk to Power BI. I can only talk to Tableau. I know both products. I work with both products. I train in both products. Tableau is a very, very good product. To be honest with you, it has less visualizations by about one-third versus what Webby is. For example, I was ginning up an example recently for demoing for like something like this, and I wanted to create a 3D column chart, X and the Z axis, a measure on the Y, and I wanted to create it in Tableau, and I was going to build a dashboard out of it. The problem I ran into is Tableau doesn't have 3D column charts. So I went, well, that's great, but that's very popular one amongst my clients. So, you know, they, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. The products shouldn't be competing with each other. They should be complementing each other because they work together. I can give you instances of two or three customers that were Fortune 100 companies that a year or two ago made the decision to go to one, one of the products only. They decided to take Power BI or Tableau, and within a year they were back saying, okay, I have a problem. I have no reporting. I can't do extensive reporting. Now what do I do? They realize that you need both products. Both Power BI and Tableau now have plugins that you can get through third party, through a company that's out there that I know very well, and will allow you to read the universes. So the universe can be sucked right into your Tableau workbook, either a push or a pull model. So that just telling you that you need the coexistence of those products is very, very important. Michael, I still have questions. Again, I, I just wanted to make sure that people that wanted to leave at one could leave at one, and we would give them all the information we wanted to give them. This is our ending slide. Thank you very much. You guys can read it for yourselves in terms of upcoming education on web intelligence and in terms of upcoming webinars and the Tableau webinar that we do have hanging off of our website as well. 
what are some exciting things coming in 4.2 SP7, 4.3, or even version 5 of Webby? 4.2 SP7, enhancements to input controls, there's some other functionality. I really need my list to go through that. The, the 4.3 release, I'm waiting for information. I'm not at liberty to release it right now until the uh, people from SAP see it's okay. So unfortunately, I can't talk to that right now. As soon as it's available, I will. Okay, fair enough. In linking report elements, is it optional to have a common dimension or a must? If the objects being used are relational based on the universe design, shouldn't it work regardless of having common dimensions in the different visualizations on a report? You have to realize you're using a query to pull the data in. Now it's stored in the microcube and you're building off of that each of your blocks. So you have to, it's imperative that you have some dimension in each one of those blocks. The query is being stored separately inside the document itself, but it stores the query and its components, and it's storing the microcube of data with the data that's for the uh, different blocks that are there. You have to have a common dimension in each one of those blocks, because otherwise it, has no, it doesn't know what you're trying to pull it on. And what if you're trying to link on two instead of one? How would it know that? It has to be a common, at least one common uh, dimension in each one of those in order for it to logically fit the pieces together. Please elaborate on the text as data source for Webby. Not related to the visualization side, but the texting functionality, it's just another data provider like Excel. If you're doing it with Excel right now, it works the same way. You create the text file outside. You have to import it using the new local document into the BI Launchpad. My favorites are public, and now it's usable. And it would be updated outside and imported on using the organized replace. So it's available in SP6 and above and it's just bringing in the text. Now we're doing some testing right now on more elaborate complex texting files to see how it works, but we're still analyzing that right now to see you know, if there's any issues there. Can a pie chart display values without having to hover over? Yep, I just didn't go to format chart and display them. Form. In fact, I might point that out with the visualization tools, particularly with Tableau. I, I love both tools and they, they're designed to coexist. I can do a format chart and do far more formatting on a, a complex chart, for example, or a simple chart in Webby than I can do on a Tableau one. Yeah, some of the charts in Tableau are, are pretty fancy and all, and there are things they have that it doesn't. And I don't want them competing with each other, I want them complementing each other for that. Oh yeah, format chart, I could have turned on the values inside or outside, I could change the font, the style, I could have thrown in the legend or turned it off. There's a myriad of things that we can do. May we have this input control high-level guidelines in the document that you're about to release? I assume that means like in the question-answer stuff that we talked about. Yes and no. To the extent that we've elaborated, we talk about all of this as part of the whole visualization overview. So there's a lot of good content that should address some of that for you there. Can a pie chart have multiple dimensions a user could switch over? Example, with a switch the same chart showing a pie for states can switch to showing for years. I hope I made that make sense. I would not do it as a pie chart because now each pie slice is going to be based on two dimensions. So as you move around and see the measure, it's based on two and you can't segment it. You'd want to do a 3D column where you have two distinct access and columns and then a specific column could have the link automatically take you across in the way that you're looking to do. When you create hyperlinks in report and it is saved to Excel, in SP6, does the hyperlink pass to Excel? Nope, not to my knowledge. And I can pretty much bet that it won't. What are the one or two other visualization products people are using? Well, let me back up. Reporting, the reporting tool of choice is Webby. The visualization tool is one of two, Tableau or Power BI. They're the ones that are the two major players in the market. With this switch hide feature, can two blocks slash charts be made to lay over one another? Since with a selection, you will be hiding one anyway. Yeah, you can, you can do it. it. Switches on and off and hide them any combination of ways. Can we make a button of the switch on the report field? For the switch? I hadn't thought about that. Let me try that one out. That's a good point. Yeah, try it from there instead. I'll have to try that one out. I don't see what well. Yeah, that one, I'd, I'd have to play with that one, but that's an interesting question. I'll, I'll do some follow-up on that one. Okay, I might have other follow-up for you on this one, too. Please, you have a request, please publish this switch feature step-by-step -step in your document as well. It's really cool. Yep, we'll make sure it's included. When exporting, a hidden chart will not be exported? Question? Anything hidden, I don't know that it gets brought across. I'd have to, I'd have to run a test on that to see. This is a phrase, show the hide options again. 
So if I go to format chart along the edge, the bottom hide logic is right there. And I can use the formula, expanded formula editor to help me build that along the way as well. Everybody, thank you all very much again. Greatly appreciate it.